Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about new approaches for quantum copy protection. This is joint work with Scott Arison, Chi Peng Liu, Mark Gendry, and Richard Zhang. As we know, quantum no cloning principle does not allow us to copy an arbitrary quantum state. And this property leads to some applications in quantum cryptography. One famous example is quantum money. A quantum money state encodes a money value and a serial number. A valid money state can get verified by the bank, but the user with one copy of money state cannot produce two copies that both pass verifications. And we wonder, can we leverage such a scheme to encode more complex clonable classical information into unclonable quantum information? Arison in 2009 put forward quantum copy protection. A copy protection algorithm turns a classical function f into a quantum state. This state can be used to run on any input such that you get the same evaluation as the original function. But the polynomial time bounded adversary cannot turn this state into two states that both compute the function f correctly. Arison also gave a first construction for copy protection for any unlearnable function using a quantum oracle. So what's an unlearnable function? An unlearnable fam family function is a family function that cannot be learned through its input output behavior by a polynomial time adversary. And here specifically, we mean quantum polytime adversary. It's clear that if a function is learnable, it can never be copy protected because the adversary can just recover the functionality from the program by learning it, no matter how you do copy protection to the program. Thus, we only care about copy protecting unlearnable functions. One drawback of Arison's scheme is that Quantum Oracle is a strong assumption. Quantum Oracles implement functionalities of quantum circuits, while classical oracles implement classical circuits. Both kinds of oracles can be heuristically implemented by cryptography assumption called virtual black box obfuscation, which scrambles a program and make it no different from accessing an oracle to the adversary. Both of these assumptions are strong, but obfuscation for quantum circuits still yet a stronger assumption than the classical one. And of course, quantum oracles in the eyes of the complexity theorists is in general much stronger tool. Therefore, Arison in 2009 asked if we can build quantum copy protection using only a classical oracle. And we give a positive uh, answer to this question in our results. And our main results can be divided into three parts. We will talk about this construction relative to a classical oracle in the second part. And before that, we briefly go through some improvement upon the definitions. Firstly, we take a look at the basic algorithms of a quantum copy protection scheme. The setup algorithm generates a secret key. The generate algorithm takes in the function f we want to copy protect and the secret key and outputs a quantum program which consists of a unitary description as well as a quantum state. From now on, whenever we describe a quantum program, we would use these two components, a unitary and a state to represent it. Here, uh, notice that we also separate set up a generate procedures because we want to specify that secret key generation is usually independent of the function. The eval algorithm takes in the quantum program and the input. It outputs the measurement result of the output register and the remaining state after evaluation. Next, we give an attempt security definition and explain its issues. First, we have correctness requirement. Of course, given an honestly generated program, we want evaluation to be correct with probability almost one for all inputs. And next, we define anti-piracy through a security game. 
a quantum polynomial time adversary is given one copy of the authentic program. Then the adversary tries to produce two parallel programs and gives to the challenger. It wins if both of these programs evaluate the function correctly with large enough probability over the input distribution correlated with the function. We want any QPT adversary to win with only negligible probability. Also note that when evaluating the Pyro programs, we would completely ignore any instructions given in the authentic program, but just use the universal circuit that run on the Pyro's program unitary end state. We want to emphasize this property because later on, we would compare it with some other weaker circuit notions. So what are some issues with this security game? In the classical setting, we would typically have the challenger estimate the fraction of correct evaluations by picking a large enough number of inputs at random or from an appropriate distribution, running the copy protected program on these inputs and computing the fraction of correct evaluations. However, in the quantum setting, when the challenger only gets a single copy of the program, each evaluation may alter the pyro program irreversibly because we can not assume we can do gentle measurement to the pyro programs like we do to the honestly generated programs. Estimating the fraction of inputs on these pyro programs that compute correctly is not generally possible. The next problem is on how we define a success probability of pyro programs on the physical level. So imagine an adversary who sends such uh, the following state to the challenger. Here, the good state is a program that evaluates perfectly at every input, and the dummy state is a useless program. Using this state, evaluation is successful on any input with probability one half. But it is impossible to have a procedure that estimates the average success probability of evaluation to very high precision, because this procedure would imply a procedure that help us distinguish perfectly the superposition of good and dummy away from the good state or from the dummy state. So we don't know how, how we can label this program successful or not. This is impossible in general since the two states are unorthogonal and have large overlap. And finally, we'll give one more example. So consider the following program entangled in such a way that with epsilon probability, we get both programs as good with one minus epsilon probability, we get both programs as dummy. Since the probability that we measure at get good good is noticeable, this program should probably be considered as a successful attack in some settings, which were not uh, considered in the past definitions. So how do we test a quantum pro uh, program properly in the security game? On a high level, we define a new procedure that consists of applying an appropriate projective measurement, which measures the success probability of the testing state under the testing input distribution. After we apply this procedure, the leftover program is still a successful prob program with probability P. Even though this leftover program is far from the original program state, but the success probability is preserved. Such a measurement will not extract the exact success probability of the program, of course, as we mentioned before, if we want to be efficient. But we can approximate it using some techniques from Merritt Watchers 2005 and January 2020. And finally, we can see how we decide if a quantum adversary wins the above game. At the beginning, the challenger sets a threshold gamma. Then apply the measurement procedure to each of the pyro programs, P1, P2, respectively. We accept a pyro program if the success probability is greater than gamma. So the adversary wins if both out probabilities are greater than gamma. And this gamma threshold is chosen depending on the family functions we try to copy protect and other factors related to applications or situations when we use copy protection. So in summary, the circuit definition has the following properties. So it's a physically meaningful testing procedure with efficient approximate implementations. It implies the attempt definition we mentioned, and it's a useful tool 
it actually helps that anti piracy security proofs go through in this paper and later work. So it's a reduction friendly definition. The next uh, it comes to our result for construction. We give a construction to copy protect any unlearnable functions using a classical oracle. So our overall high level idea is inspired by hidden subspace from Arison Cristiano's public key quantum money scheme in 2012. A hidden subspace A is a secret subspace randomly chosen by the challenger. It has exponentially many elements, but still exponentially small compared to the full space, which is, for example, an n-dimensional vector space over the finite field of two. A subspace state, cat A, is an equal superposition of elements in A, and subspace states have, have the following properties. If we do QFT to the state, we get its due subspace state with vectors in A perp. Moreover, uh, we should consider the following problem. When we give a quantum adversary one copy of state A and access to membership oracles for A and A perp, which check if an input vector is in A and if an input vector is in A perp respectively, and outputs one if only if the, uh, the input vector is in the subspace. Such a quantum adversary bounded polynomial in, in terms of queries cannot produce two vectors, one in A and one in A perp, in A perp, and both are not zero. And our security will rely on this provably hard problem. Our copy protection construction for F consists of one copy of the subspace state A and two oracles. So each oracle checks if a part of the input is in A or in A perf, respectively, and then gives a secret share of the function f evaluated on x. That is, the first oracle gives a random function evaluation on x, and the second oracle gives the random evaluation x ord with fx. To evaluate the program, the user first inputs the subspace state into Oracle 1 and measures the output. And by the gentle me uh, measurement lemma, the remaining state is still good for use. Then the user applies QFT to the state and obtains the due subspace state, inputs into the second program, and measures the output register. Then we can XOR the two output values we obtain together and would give us Fx. I will explain the security proof on a high level. So suppose an adversary is able to produce two programs that both successfully pass the test, then we can do reduction to break either one of the follow uh, of uh, either one of our underlying hard, hard problems. So in the first case, we can extract the vector V in A from the first pyro program and extract the vector U in A perp from the second pyro program. And if the second case doesn't happen, we show that we're definitely in the, in the second case, where we can use one of the pyro programs to break the unlearnability of F. It's hard to argue actually when, we, uh, when the adversary makes the programs entangled to argue that we can extract a vector from each of the pyro programs. However, in our paper, we can actually rule out this possible, uh, this possible attack by a careful analysis in the reduction. Please refer to the details in the paper. So now we already have an Oracle construction. We we'll probably wonder if we can move to a construction using more practical cryptography assumptions. Unfortunately, we do have a barrier in the plane model when we want to remove the oracles. A concurrent work shows that using a post-quantum cryptography assumption called learning with arrows and the quantum fully homomorphic encryption scheme, we can build a circuit that is unlearnable but can never be copy protected. Here, uh, learning with arrows is believably post-quantum and uh, quantum FHE can actually be built on LWE, but uh, a full-scale quantum FHE cannot be built on LWE alone. 
we need some circular security assumptions. So in the face of this barrier, the next achievable directions are, first consider weakening the security notions. Um, are there weaker but meaningful security notions for quantum copy protection that we can do better? And the second direction is, of course, we don't relax the security requirement, but we consider copy protecting specific and smaller classes of functions. For example, we can, uh, there are some follow up works uh, which gives construction for copy protecting point functions and extending to compute and compare functions in the random oracle model and copy protecting PRFs and decryption. Um, but we will focus on the first direction here in terms of the results in our paper. Before talking about our result, uh, we want to mention that in the same paper that gives the impossibility result, the authors also give a weakened security notion for copy protection. This notion is called secure software leasing. Um, in the high level, the security notion can be described as malicious pirate on its freeloader. The pirate can do anything to make pirate copies of the program, but any freeloader, the person who gets a pirate copy and wants to use it, is honest. They will follow the instructions of how to run the program published by the authentic software vendor. Therefore, when we test if a pirate program is successful, we use the evaluation function, evaluation algorithm published by the vendor or say in the original program. And this is in contrast to what we mentioned before for copy protection. In copy protection, we just use a universal quantum circuit to run on any unitary and quantum state given by the ad adversary. So uh, SSL, secure software leasing, is actually a weaker security notion in that we restrict the possible attacks from the pirate by asking him to produce pirate programs that will only run correctly run correctly only when we use evaluation instructions. Therefore, we can, for example, add some validity checks uh, in the evaluation algorithm so that only certain quantum states will pass this check and continue to output the evaluation of the function. Otherwise, you don't get to output anything. In general, even though SSL actually still does not Get a running, the generating possibility result for copy protection. And it makes it easier for us to build construction for specific families of functions in the plane model without oracles. For example, in the same paper, AL20, they give the construction for a subclass of evasive functions called compute and compare, which is an extension, as we mentioned before, of point functions. And finally, it comes to our third result. We also give a new security notion inspired by SSL. We put forward this notion called copy detection. Instead of allowing the adversary to win with any pirate programs that compute correctly, they also need to pass an additional test that tries to check if the programs are pirate copies, not authentic ones. So the adversary not only needs to produce programs that compute F, but also programs with certain features so that they, so that they won't be found out as pirates. More specifically, we have an additional algorithm called check and additional generation of public key corresponding to the secret key we generated for the copy protection. The check algorithm takes in the public key and the claimed program and outputs a bit indicating whether the program has passed this validity check. Finally, the anti piracy security is just adding this check procedure to testing of the pirate programs. We first apply check using the public key on the program and then proceed to test its functionality if and only if the program has first passed the check. Using this notion, we can build copy protection scheme for any watermarkable functions combined with the security of public key quantum money. And for watermarking, watermarking is a, is a classical cryptography tool that allows you to embed the watermark into the functions and no adversary can remove this watermark while not damaging the functionality. So uh, watermarkable fa uh, functions actually include uh, a number of families of cryptography functions such as PRFs, public key encryptions, and signatures. 
So we can do copy detection for large uh, families of functions. And what's our comp comparison with the security of SSL? Uh, so we, we want to emphasize that uh, one main difference is we emphasize the public de detectability of our scheme. And anyone with the public key can detect the program, whether it's pirated or not, um, even without any knowledge of functionality. And this is guaranteed by the security of public key quantum money and public extractable watermarking. And generally, we believe the two notions are actually have the same level of security. For example, if we combine check algorithm in the copy detection together with the universal circuit evaluation of a quantum program, we can get the evaluation algorithm as required in the SSL scheme. And another concurrent work achieves uh, security software leasing uh, for PRFs from LWE. They make some similar observation on the use of watermarking and quantum money. And they, they use the semi public key quantum money because they observe that the security of SSL does not require a fully public key quantum money scheme. And another follow up work this year, uh, it's a, it achieves the average correct and information theor uh, theoretically secure uh, SSL scheme for compute and compare functions. And finally, we give some open problems. First, watermarkability seems to be an important property for functions that can, that can be copy detected or secure software list. So can we actually lift any watermarkable functions to be copy protected as well? But of course, we may need stronger cryptography hammers at the same time. And second, can we achieve collusion resistance for copy protection? When we give out K copies to the adversary and he cannot generate K plus one copies for some polynomial K. And in the setting of public key quantum money and secure software leasing, actually it's easy to show K collusion resistance, for example, by adding a digital signature to the money scheme or assuming collusion resistant watermarking scheme for the secure software leasing. However, in copy protection, it's not clear how we can prove the security, even for the Oracle setting. And that's it. Thank you.